Welcome back to Master Your Glass with me, Livio Laro, and today I am joined by the great Giuseppe Gonzalez, who is gonna show us how to make a Trinidad sour. Now this drink literally changes the paradigm because we've always been taught that in the sour world, right, the, uh, the bitters are an accent. Yeah. You put a couple of drops. What's going on here? God, look, when I first invented this drink, I was actually trying to enter a cocktail competition, and, the para and I think the parameters were just like, show people something we've never seen before. So I saw, well, I saw a cocktail that was invented by an Italian bartender in Italy. His name was Valentino Borghese, and it was called the Trinidad Especial. And it's virtually almost the same drink, um, but long story short, it was made with Pisco, and it had like this one part of it. Like, you know, you look at a recipe and you don't, you can pretty much imagine what it's gonna taste like. So like you see in the Negroni variation, you're like, okay, it has a hint of chocolate, I can imagine. Right. But that's gonna go this. It was the first time I ever saw a recipe where I was like, wow, like, I have no idea what that tastes like. I've never tasted an ounce and a half of Angostura bitters. Um, I've never really, it was like 2008, 2009 when I was working on it. And I never played with Orja, like seriously. I did it in one drink, and until that point, like anything I tasted, but, well, it wasn't, it's not like today where we can find like really great quality Orja. So it's like one of those ingredients right. where I was just like, okay, I really, I really hate this syrup. It tastes too chemical. It tastes nothing like any almond I've ever tasted before. It's supposed mm -hmm. to taste like almonds. So I actually made my own and I put it in front of them, and I think it's the only cocktail competition I ever lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only one I ever lost. Um, and the irony is it's the, basically the drink I get hit up for the most. Um, I've seen a million variations on it, it's a lot of fun. Um, when bartenders ask me what the recipe is for it, I always feel like, oh, okay, what do you make, how do you make it? And they give me a recipe and I'm like, yeah, that works, you know? <laughs> and they're like, no, we want to do it how you make it. And I'm like, oh, well, you know what I mean? The beautiful thing about classics, trying to drink that's going to be a classic, and I always stress it to people, it's just like they have incredible range. You know, so like a Negroni with too much gin is always going to be a Negroni. Too much sweet vermouth is always going to be a Negroni. You know so is I mean? that the case with the Trinidad it's, style? And it's the case with any drink that's a classic, you know okay. what I mean? Or any drink that, you know what I mean, bartenders can play with and they can put their own creativity to it. I never say no. I'm like, yeah, that works, that works. Because at the end of the day, like, you know, an ounce of Angostura or Gorja, pretty much always, it always falls within that range. Is it going to be good? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's debatable. So uh, for today, I'm gonna to give you the original recipe. I've modified it. I'm not gonna tell you what the modification is, okay. but like, you know, cause like I said, it's irrelevant. I love but, it. But uh, let's start off with three quarter lemon juice. Okay, so three quarters lemon juice. We're adding the cheapest ingredient first, I gotcha. Don't jinx me, man, don't jinx me. Okay, I won't, no. Um, and this is one of the crazy things about the Trinidad that I saw in the recipe that I'd never <laughs> seen in a sour before, where it's actually equal parts sweet and sour. So it was something in the effect where this is like, okay, like you're adding one and a half ounces of Orjot, like that's freaking insane. Like that's not gonna work. And then you realize like Angostura is one of those ingredients where it's like, oh wow, in order to really tone it down, it you've gotta give it a kick and whatnot. Love um, it. A half ounce of rye whiskey. Okay, is that, and you asked for 100 proof. Is there a reason behind that? I've seen people play with it like a million different kinds of rye whiskey. The only reason I specifically asked for that one is just like, oh, let me keep it. You know what I mean? You know, when I invented it at Clover Club, our well whiskey, our well rye was Rittenhouse bonded. And it was always, because like we used it for everything. Got I was it. like, let me use this. Okay, so now this is the, the ingredient that makes us all very curious. What is going on here? Um, Angostura bitters. A lot of people don't realize this, but like Angostura bitters is actually 90 proof. And I was like, oh wow, it works like a base spirit, you know what I mean? But like, you know, you taste it and so much, I mean, you can't drink it on its own. Well, you can, you can do anything, yeah, you can do anything on its own, but it's not suggested. Uh -huh. um, and when I saw the recipe, I was like, oh, one and a half ounces, 90 proof. Oh, that's interesting, that works. You know, let's play with it and see what happens. Sweet. Um, when you, before we did this, you were like, you want to take the top off? I'm like, no, because I'm specifically show you that you have to take the top off. I've actually seen younger bartenders, and it's adorable, where you actually see the recipe, and they're like, streaming and streaming and streaming. <laughs> and doing this for one and a half, I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you, dude. All right. I, didn't mean to ruin, I didn't mean to ruin your shift. This is worse than a Ramos. Love it. You so know? the cap comes off very simply with your hands. Yeah. Just stick your nail in. One and a half ounces right there. Beautiful. Um, add a few cubes of ice, usually when we have like beautiful cold draft ice like here or Hoshizaki. Um, I usually add like five or six cubes. Cool. 
I love it. That is shake. One of the things I've seen bartenders do is that they add egg white. What they don't realize, or I didn't realize until I made this drink, is that Angostura bitters has a ton of oil in it mm. and emulsifies. So you technically don't need to add that egg. You don't. You don't need to. I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want. I mean, it's a sour. But like the beautiful thing is, you'll always have like a layer of froth that sits down. Oh, that's gorgeous. It becomes one color and then it changes into a deeper shade of brown. I love it. It does emulsify. It's got that nice little froth on top. It's also layered so you can see the difference between the foam on the top yeah. and, the, and the beautiful color of the drink. That's amazing. Um, and this is a Trinidad Sour. Give that a taste, brother. Oh, man. I am excited. Having said that, you know, I was wondering if, if you would be opposed to me making a little change and adding like a little garnish. Do not do that, please don't. Oh God, no. Okay, oh God. okay, well what about like, my daughter made this one. This, is this? I should have never told you I hate garnishes and drinks. Oh, so what's oh your theory God. on the garnishes? If it doesn't serve any function in helping the cocktail, um, I just throw it away. Is this the best one you've ever made? I think so. Oh, nice. Actually, no, it's not, no, it's not. I Damn it. Yeah. I cannot lie, this is an amazing cocktail. The spice coming through from the Ango is amazing. I love the nuttiness, the almond flavor coming from the Orgeat and that citrus. What a great drink, man. It's one of those drinks, so it's the only suggestion I tell you is just like if you're gonna make it for someone as a surprise, don't tell them what's in it. You know? I love it. All right. Well, be sure to tune back in to Master Your Glass where you get expert instruction for everyday consumption. Salute.